Success is a numbers game. I'm asking you to be mature enough to start checking your own numbers. How many books have you read in the last 90 days? Transform your life. Become cultured, powerful, sophisticated, healthy, influential, all the rest of the stuff you want. How many books, how many classes, how committed are you to taking what's available and turning it into equity? It's unprecedented since we live in a country where there's been no such country in the last six and a half years. My best hope for happiness at age 25 was to just go through the day with my fingers crossed, hoping somehow something would make me happy. Show said, no, Mr. Roan. Happiness is not something you postpone. Happiness is not something off in the future. Happiness is something you design. You gotta get the word. Happiness is something you design. Happiness is a study. Happiness is a practice. Happiness is an art. It's not an accident. It's an art. And anybody that wants to can study, practice the art of happy living. Happiness is like culture. Money doesn't make you cultured, but culture is within the grasp of all of us. How much is a book on sophistication in the marketplace? 40? No, 40. I'm telling you, in America, everything's available. Everything's within reach. All you have to be is committed to it and make it a study. Culture is a study. Sophistication is a study. It's not an amount. It's not an account. It's a study. Money doesn't make you sophisticated and cultured. I know a guy that's rich. He's a clod. The guy's a clod. Each with his elbow in his soup. I mean, he's just a clod. Nothing much more pitiful than a rich clod. I mean, that's a sad thing to see. Money doesn't make you sophisticated. Only study and practice make you sophisticated. Only study and practice make you cultured. And only study and practice make you happy. Study and practice make you rich. Shelves at Mr. Owen. If you wish to be wealthy, study wealth. Why wouldn't you have a superior, powerful financial plan that's taking you to the places you want to go? I'm asking you, if you find yourself caught, like I was at age 25, make the personal commitment today and say, I'm going to study and I'm going to change. And five years from now, nobody's going to be able to say, how come you don't have a superior plan? Living in a superior country with superior opportunity, nobody's going to be able to say that five years from now if you'll make that commitment. I'm telling you, this will be one of the most exciting days of your life, not because of my seminar. It'll be one of the most exciting days of your life because of your commitment to this simple little process I've outlined here. Let's talk about some more parts of personal development. Here's the first one, physical, the physical side. Gotta take care of yourself. Do not neglect to take care of yourself. Good phraseology used in the Bible in my amateur way, but let me put it to you the best I can. Here's what it says. Treat your body like a temple. That's a good phrase, good suggestion. A temple meaning something you take extremely good care of. A temple, that's a good phrase. Treat your body like a temple. Not a woodshed. A temple? A temple. Take good care. It's the only place you've got to live currently. The temple. Nutrition. My mother studied nutrition. Passed it along to me. Passed it along to my father, my children, my grandchildren. What a legacy that was. Learning to just take care of yourself is key. Some people don't do well because they don't feel well. They've got the gifts. They've got the skills. Maybe they just haven't taken care of themselves. They don't have the vitality. Key phrase, vitality is a major part of success. Vitality. So take care of yourself. I know a guy that raises racehorses. I'm telling you, the guy feeds his horses better than he feeds himself. He's so careful how he feeds his horses. He's so careful what they eat. He's so careful that they get everything. And because of that extreme care, I mean, these are magnificent animals. They can run like the wind. But you ought to see this guy 10 steps up a flight of stairs. And I mean, he's all out of breath. His horses can run like the wind and he can hardly make it up the steps. The guy takes care of his animals better than he takes care of himself. Some people feed their dogs better than they feed their cats. Physical. Now there are all kinds of parts to physical. Here's one. 
Appearance is part of the physical. Never have a second chance to make a first impression. Physical sign. And here's some of the best advice on appearance I can give you. It comes from ancient script. Again, it says, God looks on the inside, people look on the outside. Isn't that good information? Now you say, well, people shouldn't judge you by how you look. Well, let me give you a clue. They do. You can't deal in these shoulds and shouldn'ts. You'll be tipped over the rest of your life. Now, of course, when people get to know you, they'll judge you by more than what they see. But at first, they're gonna take a look. Here's the best advice I can give you. Make sure the outside is a major reflection of what's going on inside. The physical side, a few minutes a day, stay healthy. A little bit of nourishment, a little bit of study on nutrition. Stay healthy. Now here's the next part of personal development, the spiritual part. I'm an amateur. On the spiritual side, I do happen to believe that human beings are more than just an advanced life form, an advanced species of the animal kingdom. I do believe humans are a special creation. That's just my personal belief, and I don't ask you to buy it. But here's what I do ask you to buy. If you do believe in spirituality in any manner, here's my best advice. Study it and practice it. Do not neglect your values. Do not neglect your virtues. If you do believe in spirituality, my advice is to study it and practice it. Don't let it go unstudied. Don't let it go unnourished. If you do believe, that's my best advice on the spiritual side. Now here's the third part, the mental side. Part of this personal development challenge is to develop mentally, learn, study, grow, change. It's what schooling is all about. And the human development takes time, incredible amounts of time. It takes time. Some things you can't cover in a 20 minute speech, you can't cover in a little five minute talk, it takes time. For humans, it takes seriously seem like more time than any other life form, human beings. The little wildebeest in Africa, guess how much time it's got as soon as it's born to be able to run with the pack so it doesn't get eaten by the lions. Guess how much time it's got, a few minutes. Soon as the little wildebeest is born, tries to stand up, falls down. Its mother nudges it, gets it to stand back up, falls back down. Finally, on little shaky legs, it tries to nurse. Mother pushes it away, she moves away. So it can't nurse. Why it can't nurse? Now, you gotta develop some strength. Now, the lions, the lions, the lions, falls down, gets back up, tries to nurse. Mother pushes it away. No, you gotta get these legs strong. How much time have we got? Not much time. Not hours, not days, minutes, wow. But the human baby, wow. Unbelievable amount of time. So it does take time for personal development. It does take time for spiritual development, physical development. But here's also what takes time. And that's your mental development. Feeding the mind, nourishing the mind. Some people read so little. They got rickets of the mind. They couldn't give you a good, strong argument as to their own personal beliefs. Success is something you attract by the person you become. Success is not something you pursue, chase, run after. Success is something you develop, something you become, you attract success. So the whole key to unlock all the treasures, whether it's economic treasures or spiritual treasures, financial, social, personal, every way you can possibly think of is by your own personal development. What you become is much more valuable than what you get. So let's now talk about personal development. The first subject is called the seasons, an understanding of the seasons. To illustrate the total aspect of life, one of the best ways to illustrate life situations is to use the illustration of the seasons. So let's go through it here. They are the seasons. Number one, you cannot change the seasons until you get your own planet, right? You can't change the seasons. They're set. All of this has been set in motion. But here's the next piece of information. You can change yourself. You can't change the seasons, but you can change yourself. Life and business are like the changing seasons. 
Frank Sinatra sings, life is like the seasons. So now let's quickly go through the seasons. This is a whole study in itself, but I can just give you a little outline here, some ideas, and you can take it from there and use it in whatever manner that would serve you as well as to serve your own understanding of time, the passing of time. First, learn how to survive the winter. Speaking of life in its simplest aspect, the first key to learning in your life on the spinning planet is to learn how to survive. Now there's all kinds of winters, right? The winter of the calendar, right? The winter of the actual season. But then there are financial winters and social winters, personal winters. But we understand those because we've all been through them. Barbara Streisand sings, it used to be so natural to talk about forever, but used to be's don't count anymore. They just lay on the floor till we sweep them away. You don't sing me love songs. You don't say you need me, and you don't bring me flowers anymore. A winter song. But we know what those lyrics are about. You know we've been through those experiences, the winters. Here's the key on the winters. Some are long and some are short, some are easy and some are tough, but they always come right after harvest, right after fall, autumn. So we cannot rearrange the coming of the winters, but but here's what we could do. Get stronger, wiser, and better so that we can survive better. And our life will be less eroded by learning to handle the next winter. The next winter of a divorce, the next winter of an illness, the next winter of a death in the family, the next winter of a loss financially, the next winter of a crisis of whatever kind to be better equipped. So here's the key. Learn the seasons so that you can approach it all in a very intelligent way. For kids, we teach the ant philosophy. The ant philosophy. So for the kids that aren't here, take this home. For the kids that aren't here, the ant philosophy. And here's the little short list on the ant philosophy. Ants never quit. If an ant is headed somewhere and you stop him, he'll start looking for another way. How long will he look? Till he finds it or till he dies? But one way or the other, He'll find it. Okay, so that's a good philosophy. Just never quit like an ant. Ants think winter all summer. You've got to think negative when it's positive and not be disillusioned. That's why ants always seem to be in a hurry. Why are they in a hurry? Because they're thinking winter. Winter, winter. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Get going. Go, go, go. So you must think negative when it's positive. You must think winter when it's summer. Here's some of the best advice. It comes from classic tradition. A great story says, don't build your house on the sand in the summer. Why be given that advice? Because it's easy to get faked out in the summer, right? Blue sky, fleecy clouds, nice weather. So you built your house on the sand, you say, no, you must not be faked out when it's nice. You must think storm in the summer and not get faked out. And if you think storm now, you'll look for a rock on which to build your house. Now you're going to be safe. So you can't think nice when it's nice. You've got to think storm when it's nice. And if you haven't been through one of those storms, you've got to find somebody and say, have you been through one of those storms? Scare me to death, if you will, please. So I will not be faked out here and I will keep searching, right? Not to quickly build on the sand because it's nice, but to build on a rock because it's not always going to be like this. The seasons are going to come and change. And if you're not educated to that degree now, you suffer a great loss. So the ant thinks winter in the summer. The ant thinks summer in the winter. The time to think positive is when it's negative. Why? because the negative won't last long. How long is the winter? Isn't that long? So the ant thinks summer in the winter. This won't last long. We'll soon be out of here. Just hang on. It's not gonna take that long. How long is the night? It's only a few hours. Come on, there's never been a double night. Couldn't you make it a few more hours? And the story says, yes, the night just can't last. 
or sometimes it seems like it's going to last forever. And when you have insomnia, right, it seems like the night will never pass. But I'm telling you, sure enough, it will pass. So learn to think day when it's night. And then you must learn to think night when it's day. An old prophet said, work while it's day, work, work while it's day, because the night's coming, right? This was before Thomas Edison and the light. You've got to work when it's day, because the night comes when you can't work. Of course, Eve, now we can work day and night. But back then, you couldn't work when the night came. So you had to get it going. Get it in before the night came. So this is a good idea. Now, learn to think negative when it's positive. Learn to think storm when there is no storm. Learn to think winter in the summer. But then we must learn to think summer in the winter. We can make it through a few more hours, right? A few more days. It won't be that long. Hang in here. The spring will surely come. Okay, so the winters of life. Learn to express those to other people. Help them understand that as well as to try to understand it yourself. Now, here's the next season. The spring. Spring is called opportunity, not a guarantee. It's guaranteed the spring will come, but it's not a guarantee of a harvest. Here's the key. You must do something with the spring. Take advantage of the spring. Read every book you can get your hands on about what to do with the springs of your life. Take advantage of the day because the day follows the night. It's an opportunity now to turn things around. It's an opportunity to have a better one than the last one. It's an opportunity for a new beginning, a new spring, a new day, a new beginning. In business, we learn to create an artificial spring because in an industrialized society, the seasons just don't mean that much. When you're a farmer out there, they mean everything. But when you're not working on the line, whatever. So sometimes you gotta create an artificial spring. We're gonna take the next 90 days and we're really going to pour it on. Like if you're in sales the next 90 days, I'm gonna make every contact possible. You just create an artificial spring. Next 30 days, next 90 days, right? Bargain with your family. Say, look, I know we were gonna do some things the next 90 days, but if you'll postpone those for me, I'll really pay back because I wanna use this now as a springtime to go for it. Go for it, go for it. So spring is the chance to take advantage of another opportunity. The day follows the night. It is a promise, but you must take advantage. Do something with it now. Here's what you must do in the spring. It's a very short season. Usually you must hurry. You wouldn't ask a farmer to go bowling in the spring. He hasn't got time. Why? The season is too short. The planting season is too short. You gotta get it done fairly quickly and life at its longest is short. The Beatles wrote, life is very short, which is true. My father lived to be 93, but it seemed to be very short. It didn't seem that long. So life is short. For John Lennon, it was extra short. For Michael Landon, life was extra short. For my mentor who died at age 49, that's extra short. But life at the longest is short. So you must learn to appreciate opportunity and take advantage of it while it's day, while it's time. Now we call spring a window of opportunity. If you have a chance to talk to someone, the window's open. It may not stay open very long, so take advantage. Don't hesitate. Meet a new friend. Talk to somebody while the window's open. Now here's the season for everybody to understand because it is so applicable to our life. And that's the season of summer. Two things we must do in the summer. Nourish our values and protect. Nourish like a mother, protect like a father. The twin challenges in the summertime help to illustrate life that we are confronted with both good and evil. Is that the way it should be? You gotta ask somebody a little higher up than me. We could get into probably a pretty great debate. Would there be good without evil? 
Here's the best answer I've got in our finite position at the moment. Here's the best answer. It doesn't seem like it. It seems like it takes the contrast to make a scenario, to make an adventure. Now, remember, we didn't set it up. So, but here's what seems to be the setup. Opposites in conflict. That seems to be the setup for a human adventure. One contesting against the other, vying for the territory. Would there be light without darkness? We probably wouldn't call it light. What gives us the value of one is the contrast of the other. But darkness is always trying to move in and take all the territory. But if you turn on the light, its energy starts to repel darkness. Darkness begins to move away, move away. And the brighter the light, the further away the darkness must move. If you walk into a dark room and turn on the light, the darkness is what? Gone. But here's the point to remember. Not very far. The darkness seems to be, yes, it's gone, but it's waiting. Waiting for its chance that if energy, light loses its energy, darkness has a chance not to move back in. Here's one of the better realistic illustrations. And that's health and illness at odds in your body. Illness trying its best to drive health into a small corner and occupy the territory. And health trying what? To push illness into a small corner. There's this contest going on. Who's going to occupy the territory? If one stays strong, the other is diminished. If the other gains in power, then the other is diminished. So what you must learn to do is cooperate with the positive side of everything in your body and your life. Sometimes we sabotage our own best interest. The body needs a banana. You send it a Coca-Cola and the body says, what is the deal here? I'm hell's trying to drive illness into a small corner. I ordered a banana. You send me a Coca-Cola. So the body could rightfully say, what? Whose side are you on? Give us a break here. We need every tool we can get to keep illness at bay. Because if we get weak, I'm telling you, it moves in, moves in, moves in, takes the territory. So we're in the middle of this contest. And here's what it's called, opposites in conflict. Here's one of the bigger conflicts, liberty and tyranny. Liberty is the absence of tyranny. But even though tyranny is conquered, it's not very far away. The same goes on in your bloodstream. Red corpuscles to nourish like a mother and give life. White corpuscles to fight and kill like a father. White corpuscles say, just show me some infection, I'll kill it. If I don't kill it. What? It killed you? Somebody's gonna get killed in this contest, right? Good, evil, liberty, tyranny, right? Health, illness, winning and losing, right? There's the struggle going on. But here's the key. It's the only way, it seems it's the only way to create a human adventure. There doesn't seem to be any other way. Currently. Now, some speak of a new heaven and a new earth. And maybe the whole arrangement will be different. Could very well be. But in this current experience, it seems like to create an adventure, to create a unique human scenario. We need opposites in conflict. And that's the deal. Thank God for white corpuscles that think negative all day. Liberty and tyranny in a contest. And it's the only way to have a civilized society. Tyranny cannot be rehabilitated. Tyranny can only be restrained, right to contain. So that liberty would have a chance. The citizens of the world would have a chance. That the world would have a better chance. And we've got to fight these skirmishes. We've been fighting them forever. We've got to fight them forever, whether they're inside your own body or whether they're in politics, no matter where they are. We must play this game. We must fight this game. But here's what it creates, a great adventure. Let me give you the ultimate now. Could you win if you couldn't lose? And the answer is no. It doesn't seem like it. You couldn't call it winning. You can't win if you couldn't lose. So that's the deal. Now, negative, positive. Would there be negative, positive without negative? No, it doesn't seem like it. 
It seems like this is the current setup, you know, for the foreseeable future. It looks like it's been that way, as long as we can remember and as long as the history tells us. So here's what you want to do. If you want the adventure, you must learn to play this game, to work with all the positive forces, to defeat the negative forces as early and as soon and as much as possible, to contain the ravages of disease that want to take you early. You gotta fight back. You can't just leave it. Somebody says, well, I got my fingers crossed. Not a good philosophy. You gotta take your vitamins. You gotta do the stuff. You gotta do the deal. Jump on the positive side of whatever you want and see if you can't help out in this warfare and this push-shove match. That's the key. So, in the summer, here's what you must do. Nourish the plants in the garden. Nourish your values like a mother. Give life whatever you start. Now, you must nourishment and give it life. Now, here's the other part. You must protect it like a father. That's why the old wise man said, we must learn to love and hate. And the illustration he used was, you must learn to love good and hate evil. To deal with the weeds in your garden, you got to hate weeds. You got to hate them enough to what? Kill them? You can't say, well, poor weeds. Say, no, this ain't the deal. Poor weeds don't go soft on this stuff. Now you got to hate evil. You got to hate the weeds that are out to destroy your garden and rob your children of the nourishment they desire. So here's the deal. Love like a mother, hate like a father. And here's the rest of it. Give life like a mother and take life like a father. Any father would say to whatever threatens his family, take three more steps toward this family, you'll cease to exist. I'm father. I kill, so send out the warning. Send out the signal. Both mother and father reside here. Mother nourishes and father gives protection. Now, here's one more season, and that's the season of harvest. Here's the key to remember harvest time in due season, in due time when it's time. And part of this is to develop the patience so that when it's time, it will come. But you cannot be impatient. Patience is part of the game here. You can't plant the seed. And two, three days later, dog around and say, where's my crop? Where's my crop? Say, no, come on, that's foolish. We'll take you away to some safe place. You got to plant and what? You got to plant and wait and exercise patience. And then when it comes time, you give it nourishment and you give it care and you give it protection. And then you got to wait some more and you got to wait some more and you got to wait. But here's what it says in due time, in due season, when it's ready, when it's time for you, whatever it is, financially, socially, personally, economically, whatever the time, when it's time, your harvest will come. The old wise man said, what? Run the race and the prize will be yours if you don't faint. And sometimes in the summer, it's easy when the sun is hot to faint, to spend less time. But if you faint, not if you're there, ready. After this activity of summer, do the summer work. Just make the little note. Do the work of summer, nourishing, protecting, whether it's family, whether it's business. The work of summer. Here's what I'm asking you to do. Walk away from the 97%. Don't use their vocabulary. Don't use their excuses. Don't use their method of drinking. Drift and neglect. Won't even walk around the block for their health. Won't even eat an apple a day. Won't even take the time to refine their philosophy for a better life. Walk away and join the 3%. Guess how many people can retire from the income of their own personal resources when it comes time to retire? Answer, 5%. In America, 5% of the people are independent. 95% are dependent. Take charge of your own retirement. You can multiply it at least by five. Let the government take care of it. Some company take care of it. You gotta divide by five. I'm asking you, take charge of your own retirement. Take charge of your own life. It happens to be one of the titles of my own cassette program. Take charge of your own life. That's what we've talked about here all morning. Take charge of your own day. 
don't have days like most people have, you'll wind up broke and poor, penniless, no treasures, trinkets, no values. Change it all. And it starts as simple as an apple a day. It starts as simple as the first book of your new library. It starts as simple as the first journal that you get and make the first entry that when people see it will say, this is the beginning of a study of a serious student. They're going to be healthy. They're going to be powerful. They're going to be rich. They're going to have it all. Look, they've committed themselves to a whole new journey. I'm asking you to do that. But what's easy to do is what easy not to do. But walk away from the 90. Walk away from the 97%. Walk away from the 95%. Don't go where they go. Don't do what they do. Don't talk like they talk. Develop you a whole new language. I'm asking you not to hope they're going to fix this out here next year so that you'll be healthier. I'm asking you to pick up some new disciplines so that you will be healthier. Drive yourself to do it book by book, entry by entry. It's all available for.